Hey, welcome back to the eight. We're joined by two laughing birds over here and one non laughing bird over here. Welcome back, Sean. Thank you. Um, how come we don't have like nicer microphones? Well, this is the eight. <laughs> Uh, you probably make a fair point. I, I do think we should get nicer microphones. Just like the ones that are like underneath your shirt and we can just all talk and you don't have to... Lavalier. Well, wait. Now she just talked. It's called a lavalier. Yeah, it's a, it's a lava, lavalier. <laughs> that, that sounds very technical. I like it. Look, I, we're working here. We're, we're making progress. We have a great, great editor back there. Sometimes you hear her giggle over there. Maybe not that time. Um, <laughs> But the, we're getting better, so may, maybe we'll get them soon. Great. All right, this is the eight. How about we kick this off? You stay over there. All right, so the first story, the buzz. I love the ding when Sean looks up. Um, I'm going to go to Cassie with this after, after I read this, this long uh, news hit. Uh, okay, so the buzz, uh, Franchise Times reported that uh, after the Cubs' historic win, it opened a floodgate for the freshie offer. I, I also want Megan and Sean's insight into this. So last week, Master Franchise for Freshie in Chicago, David Grossman, offered to waive the 30000 franchise fee uh, to another diehard Cubs fan of Chicago's team won a World Series. Grossman, who's a third-generation, lifelong Chicagoan Cubs fan, attended Game 7 of the World Series in Cleveland. It was electric, he told Franchise Times. After and even before the big win, hundreds of Cubs fans and the fran and franchisee hopefuls sent in applications to open up a freshy location. It started at like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning on Thursday, Grossman said. There were several hundred, and they're still coming in today. It's amazing how many come in. Some people wrote these stories and sent in pictures, not, not only how they loved the Cubs, but how they loved Freshy. Um, it's been heartwarming to hear Grossman's concern is that the applications didn't read the fine print and didn't realize that they'll still be responsible for build out and equipment costs, uh, which costs about $260,000 in the next coming weeks. Grossman will be conducting phone interviews to figure out who is the most qualified applicant. So Cassie, your thoughts on, on this story is, is it a good idea to tie a, a franchise deal into Cubs winning? Could this be beneficial for Freshy? And then Sean, will go to you. So start thinking of your answer I think this is a great way to create a lot of buzz this clearly is getting a lot of media attention and it's kind of a cool way to make this more relevant to people who are outside of the franchising industry and may not be aware of the opportunity but it is gonna mean a lot of work for the freshie team going forward to find a lead that's worth their time and is qualified to run a freshie okay. Sean your thoughts I think it's like I agree with Cassie I think it's great uh, kind of a buzzworthy event. Uh, I don't know if anybody's actually going to buy a franchise versus getting $30,000 off in a total investment, but we're talking about it. It's in the media. It's great. I think they should offer something for the city of Cleveland for, you know, that, since they lost and they can get something out of it, something good out of it. Double franchise fees? Maybe not that. <laughs> uh, Megan, thoughts? I, I agree. I think it, it's it's clearly a good way to to bring some hype, but I don't know that it's necessarily the best way to get a qualified lead. Yeah, I think the, the important part of that story is that uh, candidates are not reading the fine print. So you hear waived franchise fee, you think, oh, I can I can get a freshie for, for free, and it doesn't really work that way. I don't, I don't think many franchisors are willing to do the build-out. Um, additionally, we've talked about this in the past, Sean, that, that operators, good operators, don't really care about the waived franchise fee. That's not going to motivate them to buy. So um, it's, it's a good hook, and, and Freshie did a nice job of getting in the media. Um, so panel, do we give them a thumb? Thumbs up or thumbs down on this initiative? Okay, there's some there's, there's some positive thumbs. Uh, number seven, our brand of the week, uh, Workout Anytime, which is a hundred unit plus brand. Their investment level is three hundred fifty one thousand three hundred to eight hundred and thirty six thousand five hundred. They have a twenty nine thousand twenty five twenty nine thousand five hundred franchise fee. Uh, some of the articles from their site, if you go to workoutanytime dot eighteen fifty one franchise dot com, you'll see the Spectrum reported that uh, Workout Anytime is I in St. George for development in Utah. Uh, their simple business model and expansive growth 
the potential is catching on to multi-unit operators and franchisee uh, Brooks Rankin translate his passion into for fitness into into business. Sean, just some thoughts on workout anytime as a franchise opportunity. Uh, hot industry, as we all know, fitness is going to stay that way. I like their footprint because it's relatively small. So from an investment level, it's not a huge investment compared to some of other fitness franchises that are out there. Um, they have a good ROI. And so they have a, a lot, a lot of fr footprint available. So a lot of good market areas. So <laughs> compared to other fitness franchises that are out there, they're kind of large in size. Um, if you're looking to do a multi-unit deal in a certain market area, you have good potential with work at any time. Okay, uh, our people story, uh, I'm just uh, going to go to the two of you and tell me about someone that you interviewed this week and why you liked interviewing them. My people story? Um, gosh, it's really putting me on the spot. Who did I interview this week? <laughs> it's only Tuesday. <laughs> it's Friday in the... In the it's Friday, Megan. <laughs> All right, watch this. Hey, hey, Cassie, tell me about someone that you interviewed in last week that you enjoyed. In the last week, I was going to talk about an upcoming interview that I have tomorrow that I'm looking forward to, kind of piggybacking off of our workout anytime conversation. I'm going to be talking to Randy Trotter, who handles their development, um, kind of talking about how, as Sean mentioned, their multi-unit opportunity, the low investment model that they have kind of gives these franchisees the opportunity to come in and um, open up multiple locations for the price that they could, one, at potentially another bigger company. Um, so I think it's going to be a really cool story once it hits 1851. Okay, great. Thanks for that. What, what, oh, okay, what now? I just thought of one. <laughs> um, uh, last Friday, I interviewed a parent that goes to Lightbridge Academy, um, and she told me about firsthand the experience that she's had using the Parent View Monitoring System, which was kind of a nice angle because we're talking a lot about it um, from the franchisee's perspective, and it was really great to hear how life-changing that has been for this parent who's always on the road and doesn't get to see her children very often. She was able to log in and just check and see what her kids are up to even if she's thousands of miles away, which is exactly what it was designed to do, which is great. I love that. So here's two of our great writers interviewing great people on great stories, which is authentic, real content. Um, and it's great to get that feedback on those stories. For the profits piece, uh, we've had the benefit of having Sean uh, earlier this week teach a Franchising 101 class to our agency and to the 1851 team. Uh, from a profit standpoint, Sean, what is the number one thing franchise prospects should know about profits as it relates back to their business? Wow. Um, I'd say understanding your true EBITDA. I mean, I think a lot of times and it's surprising because small business owners will get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day of the business and they'll, what I used to call their, their uh, checking account accounting, where if there's money in the checking account, I'm doing well. If there isn't, I'm not. Um, but really getting a full understanding of your P&L and your financial statements is really key to help uh, small business owners. So. Okay. Great. Sean, I'm going to stick with you on this one uh, for our places story. Thing. Um, brands are, are starting to get a little bit more focused on the way that they're expanding. Um, they're looking at whether that's Google Analytics or they're looking at territory data. Um, do you see that trend continuing that they're going to be able to narrow down exact location that should show more profit? Um, what, what are the trends in, in uh, target market selection right now? That's a great question because with um, business intelligence becoming more and more a factor in franchise models is that now they can kind of use that information to help make uh, smart business decisions on selection and uh, locations and territories and so forth or where to focus their growth. So I think you're going to see that more and more. And with platforms like Fran Connect, where they have a lot of really strong data and information um, and their POS systems to understand where their customers are, where they're at, will help them determine where to go next. Okay, great. Uh, column story, it's my column this week. Uh, creating a successful business starts and ends with giants. Uh, we have three giants here. And Sean, I'm just kidding, you're, you're a giant too. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Sean, Sean is a giant in franchising. Like, like a positive guy. He's a genius. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the, the whole point of it is that if you want to create a great business, it's going to start with great people. Uh, and here at 1851, we've developed a great team. And Scott, is that, is that a better joke if I say a great team and then Scott? He's not here. That was kind of the point. Um, but no, we've created an excellent squad here, and we're continuously trying to tell the great stories that exist out there. So um, read the column. I think you'll get good insight that, that published yesterday in the media. Uh, 
the the election it's over unfortunately we're filming on tuesday and it's friday that you're watching this so who knows what happened i don't know what to say i don't know who won yet any predictions no <laughs> it's probably safer that way any predictions no no <laughs> so so I, i'm gonna say this comment and and i'll let i'll let one of you raise your hand if you want to respond to this in in previous elections People seem, you'll have different ways that you decide to vote. Um, but at the end of the vote, whether, whether it was Romney and Obama or McCain and Obama, at the end, Republicans and Democrats still come together as, as a country. One of the debates here is that it's been so heated that it is so black and white of, of who you're going after that it's going to take a little bit of time for us to all get along um, afterwards. It, it, could be, it could go down as the largest reality show in the history of, of our world in this, in this last election. Um, I, I certainly am hopeful that uh, no matter who won on Tuesday, and, and who knows, if, if Hillary won, Trump may not even concede. He might want to take this in a legal route. So this, this could still be going on right now. We might not know uh, a winner yet, or, or vice versa. Hillary might want to sue Trump for something. I mean, there's, there's a ton of mess that could still happen. Um, but I'm hopeful that we come back together as a country and realize that, that America, she, she's going to be just fine, and, and we're going to move on. And, and whatever happens in the next four years, uh, from a franchise business perspective, franchisees, franchisors, you're still going to be able to grow. Um, nothing's going to change there. Any comments on that? America has a way of rallying that really no other country has. Can you tell that I come from a military family? <laughs> hey, I think, what? Oh, yes. I'm just looking forward to my Facebook feed going back to cat videos again. Mm -hmm. You mean there weren't any Trump, Hillary cat videos? No, not yet. I wish I would have thought of that, though. Well, and um, let, me, let me end this, because now we're at number one, and I'm just going to keep moving on there. And we're going to go to thought of the week, and this comes from Megan. Megan, what makes a great interview e when you're interviewing them? What what do you love most when uh, when you get someone that's telling a great story to you? Oh gosh, I think it's when I, we talk about passion a lot, right? Um, it's it's when people. I've, I've interviewed people who would get so um, worked up about the brand that they're with to the point of tears because it's it's changed their life so much. When you talk to people like that, it's it's incredible to see just how impactful franchising has been to certain people, and and that's not uncommon in the people that I've talked to. I think that's a great point. So, <clears throat> tears, man. Sean, what's it like? being associated with a brand like 1851. It's life changing. It's wonderful. We made Sean cry. This is the eights.